Good afternoon, I'm Sean Yao and this is One News Now. After the quick shift back to stricter lockdown for Metro Manila and nearby provinces starting tomorrow, Malacanang sought to clarify the details of last night's announcement. Joining us is News 5's Maricel Halile from Mandaluyong to tell us more. Mase, uh, can you give us a quick recap on what happened earlier at the 12 noon briefing from the palace? Are there new guidelines for MECQ or more exceptions this time around? Um, Sean, based on the explanation of presidential spokesperson Harry Doke in his briefing earlier, it seems that uh, there are no changes on the original uh, omnibus guidelines released by the Interagency Task Force uh, for the places under the modified enhanced community quarantine. But just to recap, some of the uh, guidelines under MECQ are, number one, there should be strict home quarantine in all households, meaning those uh, ages 21 years old and below and 60 years old and above are not allowed or discouraged to go out of their houses um, unless it is really necessary, like if they need to buy essential uh, goods. And um, there will be a, a limited uh, uh, access or uh, allowance in going out, like if they have to uh, buy uh, essential goods, like what I said, and uh, if they are part of those people allowed to uh, get out of their houses, like the workforce. But of course, the industries are also limited under... Um, MECQ. Um, next, um, for, for places under MECQ, individual outdoor exercise are also limited to biking, jogging, walking. There won't be any uh, non-contact sports uh, in these uh, places. Mass gatherings are also not, not allowed. They will allow uh, religious uh, activities provided that they will limit the attendees up to five persons only. Um, aside from that, of course, there won't be face-to-face -face, uh, uh, classes in all uh, levels. Public transportation uh, are not allowed once again. So uh, those uh, who have uh, private vehicles uh, will only be allowed to go out. Uh, motorcycles are allowed. Tricycles are not allowed. But back riding, motorcycle, uh, motorcycle back riders are also uh, not allowed in places under MECQ. All right, let's talk about cash subsidies. A lot of people are asking if there will be a fresh round now that NCR is back under MECQ. Is that an update? Is there SAP 2? Mm -hmm. Sean, we actually asked Secretary Roque about the possible uh, uh, third tranche of the uh, amelioration program. But uh, Secretary Roque said that to be able to do that, um, it should uh, pass into law. So it should be part of the Bayanihan II. Um, for now, all they can do is that they have to assess the uh, capabilities of DSWD and the local government unit if they have enough funds to uh, provide additional assistance to those people who will be affected in places under MECQ. Um, that's all they can do while waiting for the Bayanihan II to be passed. All right. Um, did Secretary Roque also mention anything uh, regarding where we are in the fight against COVID-19? Are we winning this time around? Are we losing this time around? Or is it too early to say uh, anything on that? Mm -hmm. Um, probably it's better to quote uh, Secretary uh, Galvez. He said that um, we are in a critical uh, phase right now because of the uh, increasing number of uh, COVID cases. As we all know, we are already in uh, 103,000. We or we have already recorded 103,000 COVID uh, cases because of the 5,000 additional new cases reported uh, yesterday. But the uh, Malacanang official said that we cannot uh, say that we are losing the battle just because we are heeding to the calls of medical frontliners to place Metro Manila back to MECQ. It simply means that the government is listening to the calls of our uh, frontliners. But like what I said earlier, Secretary Galvez admitted that we are in a critical phase because of the increasing number of COVID uh, cases. But uh, they promised that they will do anything 
um, just to improve our uh, situation. Um, that includes the uh, expansion of uh, bed capacity in uh, some hospitals. And uh, he also mentioned that uh, although we have uh, increasing number of COVID-19 uh, cases, um, there's, there's nothing to be alarmed of because this is a, this, a situation all over the country, even big countries like America and Europe are also facing the uh, same problem. So we still have to wait for the vaccine to end this uh, pandemic. All right. Uh, there is also some clarification that happened, Masse, regarding President Duterte's remark about revolution with the medical community or addressing the medical community. How did uh, Palace spokesman Roque address this or explain this? Um, it was actually surprising uh, last we were actually surprised last night when we heard the president uh, mentioning that particular statement about revolution on uh, the call of the frontliner secretary Roque earlier explained that um, what drives the president to say those statements is that number one uh, some of the medical frontliners who have complaints with how the government is handling the situation go directly to the media and uh, state as their uh, position instead of going directly to the president and uh, and tell them their uh, complaints. So probably that's one of the reasons why President Duterte was disappointed with the statement of uh, some of the frontliners. And number two, uh, the statement of the frontliners came uh, in time with some uh, criticisms coming from uh, the opposition, particularly Senator Drilon and Vice President Lenny uh, Robredo. If you recall, Sean, uh, Senator Drilon uh, even said that the government's effort against COVID-19 can be considered as a failure because of the increasing number of the COVID-19 uh, cases. And of course, it doesn't sit well with the uh, Malacanang. And um, aside from that, number three, uh, Secretary uh, Roque also mentioned that there was uh, uh, this uh, song from uh, Les Miserables uh, about revolutions that probably become uh, a trend in the internet. And uh, that's, that's also one of the reasons why President Duterte mentioned those statements uh, last night. All right, thank you for summing up the 12 noon briefing for us. Maricel Halili of News 5, thank you for joining us. And here are other stories we're keeping our eyes on. The Philippine National Police will be setting up more checkpoints in and around Metro Manila and other provinces that will be shifting back to a modified enhanced community quarantine starting tomorrow. The PNP reminds the public that only authorized persons will be allowed to go out in MECQ areas until August 18. Senate is also set to go on lockdown for two weeks in support of the frontliners' call for a timeout. Senate President Tito Soto says virtual hearings will still be ongoing, particularly on the alleged PhilHealth scam and for bilateral or bicameral committee meetings for Bayanihan II. And the PBA says it will be postponing the resumption of players' training after Metro Manila's shift back to MECQ. The league said swab tests for the players scheduled later this week will also be pushed back. For more updates, follow News 5, the Philippine Star, and Business World Online. Visit our website, onenews.ph, for more in-depth analysis. You can also catch One News on the Signal Play app. Register for a free account now at www.signalplay.com and stream One News Live anytime, anywhere. I'm Sean Yao, and we are One News.